بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ثانكس بروفيسور ايمان الشريف فور ذيس انترستنج انتروداكشن ماي توبيك توداي ذيس ليبيديميا ميس ميس اند فاكت موست اوف ذا ليتشرتشر ار بريبيرد باي اور دير براذر اند دير بارتنر بروفيسور احمد تاج الدين اند اي بليجر اند تو اونر تو بي بارتيسيبيت ان ذيس سيشن ثانكس ليبتس ليبتس فارما فور For uh, what the, the main cardiovascular mortality is the main killer in the world. Every 40 seconds, someone die from cardiovascular disease. Every four minutes, someone die from stroke. 18 million people worldwide die from heart disease. Over 400 million men and women have a kind of cardiovascular illness. Myth and defect. Factor miss. This lipidemia is dangerous. Professor Tech. Yeah, um, if you go to this uh, slide, you will find that uh, it's a fact. This lipidemia is dangerous. It's usually associated with uh, so many comorbidities, including uh, hypertension, diabetes, and cardiovascular uh, disease. And if you and if you go to the interheart study, and we, we were honored to be part of this international study, South Carolina University Cardiology Department, we will find that LDL has a 55% responsibility for acute myocardial infarction. This, a very, this is a very important slide. So if, I, if someone called you and told you that his brother has LDL of 140, so for some persons, you will say, okay, he's at mild risk. Others, you will say he's at moderate risk or high risk or very high risk. According to comorbidities, does he have any diabetes, established cardiovascular disease, metabolic syndrome, impaired glucose uh, tolerance, or so on. So it's important not to read the number, but to read the patient. And if you see here that reduction of about 40 uh, milligram of LDL is associated with reduction of around 20% risk of major cardiovascular evidence as you could see here cardiovascular disease amputations lower limb ischemia so let me ask you professor Ihab is it a fact or mess LDL targets are same for all patients what's your opinion factor miss yes because we have different uh, target we reach according to the uh, score according to risk evaluation. If the patient have a low risk, the target is to reduction of LDL before 116. If the patient have short duration of diabetes less than uh, 10 years as the European Society of Cardiology, but a duration of diabetes as a risk factor of a young patient, type 1 diabetes below 35 or type 2 diabetes below 50, this is a moderate risk. And we, we, the target here is below 100. If the patient had a long duration, or the target organ damage or diabetes duration more than 10, we, the target will be declined to the less than 70. If the patient had a very high risk, uh, like familial hyper, uh, high, uh, hyperlipidemia or diabetes, so target organ damage or more than three ris risk factor of the long duration of diabetes here, the target will be below 55. So most of our diabetic population are moderate risk or high risk or very high risk. Diabetes extremely to present with low risk situation. So factor miss, statin intensity are the same. Professor Tech. Do you think about that? Do all statins have the same intensity? Of course, you know the answer that no, not all of them have the same intensity. We have high intensity statins, including atorvastatin 40 milligram or 80 milligram, and including as well rosuvastatin 20 to 40 milligram, while other statins with different concentrations would have like a moderate to mild reduction of LDL. And it's not only their effect on LDL or even triglycerides, but their pleiotropic effect actually is still different. And pleiotropic effects are non-LDL reduction effects of statins, including reduction of all processes of atherothrombosis. So, uh, for example, they reduce the toxic substances, uh, they uh, reduce C-reactive protein, high-sensitive C-reactive protein, which is responsible or part of the process of atherosclerosis and thrombosis. So, let me ask you, Professor Ehab, uh, could you combine two anti-dyslipidemic agents 
if you want to reduce LDL by more than 70%. Be present in our practice, daily practice of diabetes, early combination therapy present in diabetes, and also present hypertension. The other research factor is this lipidemia. We, in, in, in many situations, we need to reach the target, which is the sometimes below 55. It is difficult to reach this with one drug. So, if you use a moderate intense statin, it causes reduction more than 30%. If you use a high intense statin, reduction of LDL below 50%. If you high intense statin plus is the which is the, our combination here with Lebetas, which is called Atrozim 40, 40, 40 uh, Torvastatin plus, uh, plus, uh, plus 10 is it a MIB, you cause a reduction of about 65%, which is equal to use of the BCK9, BCK9 alone, which is injectable and cost of. If, if you were to, to reach more target, if you use BCK, BCK9, which is not used alone, it adds on therapy. If the patient reach, not to reach the target with high intense statin, you reach to the LDL reduction more than 75. If you use three anti lipidemic lipidemic if in the case of familial dyslipidemia, which is LDL target, sometimes with 400, to reach this target, to reach this, to the target below 100, you reach to three anti dyslipidemic medication, BCK9. High intense statin and plus is the mild to cause a reduction of more than 85%. The other fact or miss, does the doubling of dose of the statin, does that result doubling effect to use combination therapy or increase the dose of the statin? Here we use the rule of, of, rule of, uh, rule of 60. If you are starting with statin 10 milligrams, add double the dose, you add 66% increase in the reduction of LED target. If you add another, Another dose, a doubling of dose, you add 60%. If you add azetamide, 6%. If you add azetamide, which it, uh, target another mechanism of action, uh, statin decreases the production. Azetamide act on the, the, uh, the absorption. If you use both, you add in one step a teen reduction of LDL target. So doubling the statin dose reduce about 60%, adding azetamide doubling about, about 15%. Fact or miss? Combination therapy are not needed in most patients of this epidemia. Professor Tech. Yeah, so if we try to answer this question, we have to stick to the guidelines. And if you see in the guidelines that initially, usually you start with monotherapy, especially in low risk patients and moderate risk patients. However, in high risk patients or very high risk patients, and we can clearly see that from starting from high to very high that they are, they are the patients with established cardiovascular disease, even including diabetes, including rheumatoid arthritis, which is equivalent to coronary artery disease. So if you see in the guidelines, you start with monotherapy in selected patients. You could start with combination therapy again in selected patients. If you didn't reach the target with monotherapy within a few weeks, you can combine statin with ezetimibe according to the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines and European Atherosclerosis Society. Uh, and if you see this important position uh, statement or consensus uh, statement uh, raised by the European Atherosclerosis Society, Professor Kosek Ray, and we have invited him uh, to one of our ESMA, I think um, third or fourth ESMA maybe. He's a professor of uh, clinical epidemiology and clinical cardiology, and he's one of the famous WHO consultants in cardiology. He's interested mainly those days in uh, uh, dyslipidemia management. He has a very important uh, position statement uh, in patients with acute coronary syndrome. So if you have a patient presented with acute coronary syndrome, and he has PCI, we have to measure LDL. If we find LDL initially more than 300 millimeter, any patient, milligram per deciliter, sorry, any patient, we have to start with triple lipid lowering therapy, including maximal tolerated statin therapy, plus ezetimibe, plus PCK-SK9, and this will end up with possible reduction of LDL by more than 85%. Again, if you have a patient with uh, 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 acute coronary syndrome and receive PCI, and their LDL was somewhere between 100 and 300, and they are treated with a statin, or their LDL between 120 up to 300, and they have no prior treatment, so the answer is that we have to start with dual 
lipid lowering therapy, including maximal tolerated statin plus ezetimibe. So if you have a patient in the CCU diagnosed with acute coronary syndrome, if his initial LDL more than 300, go for the treble therapy. If it is between 100 or 120 up to 300, either on treatment, because this is considered as treatment failure, he's on treatment and he has acute coronary syndrome, or without treatment, you can go for dual therapy. What about if I find the same patient with LDL less than 100? If it is less than 100 and he's a statin treatment, we have to start atorvastatin as secondary prevention for those patients. And this is, was approved by the European Atherosclerosis Society, European Society of Cardiology, and NICE guidelines 2022. That atorvastatin with high dose plus ezetimibe is indicated for secondary prevention in patients with acute coronary uh, syndrome. If the patient has no prior treatment and his LDL less than 100 treatment, we can start with maximally tolerated statin. Within a few weeks, which is between four weeks to six weeks, if we didn't reach the target, according to European Society of Cardiology guidelines, we have to add ezetimibe. So let me ask you, Professor Ehab, could statin, could statin, ezetimibe be used in primary prevention? So I want to give, uh, I want you to give me your point of view as diabetologists. Yes. According to the American Diabetes Association guideline standard of care 2023, uh, if a uh, patient were aged from 40 to 75 with, without atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, we use moderate intensity. Diabetes cause, cause coronary heart disease risk equivalent, diabetes per C, without atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. But if the people less than this, you, you may initiate a statin therapy. But if the people with the, the same age and has the one or more risk factor should use high intensity statin to dose reduction more than 50% to reach the LLE target. If the patient in the same patient but has high atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk factor, you, you use, you add ezetimibe, you have the combination therapy, has a rule in a primary prevention in a patient with diabetes. If the, if the patient is aged 40 to 75, and the high atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk, we can use to add ezetimibe to maximum tolerated statin or use BCSK9, but the matter of cost, ezetimibe is much cheaper than BCSK9, which is very costly and injection. And the people more than 75, and is already on statin therapy, you can continue. But if the patient not take over 75, but not take, it is risk of qualification and the individualization according to the patient. In secondary prevention, all patients with diabetes, with atherosclerotic cardiovascular, with high intensity statin, if you not reach the target, which is sometimes very high risk, uh, below 55, you can use, you add istamib to maximum tolerated statin, you add BCSK9 according to the situation. Uh, here, is the uh, American Association of Clinical Endocrinology Type 2 Diabetes 2023 from two months, uh, encourage the same segment, high risk, or very high risk or extreme risk, which is constitute most of our diabetic patients. If a high risk, reduction of LDL below 100. If a moderate, very high risk, below 70, below 70 milligram. If extreme high risk patient already presenting diabetic and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, we do reduction to ruby 25 and use here the combination therapy is mandatory in this patient. Factor miss, could statin is it might be used in secondary prevention? Cardiologist point of view, Professor Tag. So, uh, from cardiologist point of view, we usually rely on trials, uh, especially if they are randomized controlled trials. One of those important trials was the ISBATH study, efficacy and safety of zetimibe added to atorvastatin compared with uh, up titration of uh, atorvastatin up to 80 milligram, which is the maximum dose of atorvastatin in patients with. Uh, dyslipidemia and high risk of coronary artery disease. If you see this study, about 300 each limb, about 288 for one limb, and the other one is 291. Uh, one limb received ezetimibe with uh, atorvastatin, 40 milligram, and the other received uh, atorvastatin, 80 milligram. And at the end of the study, within a few weeks, actually, more than uh, 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 I mean, three quarters of the patients, 74 percent, uh, reached to the target of less than 70 milligram per deciliter. And this is very important for 
patients at high risk. If they are at very high risk, we should go lower than 55. While patients on 80 milligram, only 32% uh, got the target of less than 70 milligram per deciliter. Another trial, which is Zeus trial. We have two trials coming now, the Zeus trial and precise IVUS trial. And in those both trials, we will find that the atheroma volume Atheroma burden was reduced by atorvastatin ezetimibe in uh, either diabetic uh, uh, patients with the change in LDL less than uh, 70 milligram per deciliter. And the conclusion was that the early intensification of lipid lowering therapy, including adding ezetimibe to atorvastatin 10, 40 milligram, reduce the volume, the blood volume of the atheroma in patients at high risk to develop coronary artery disease. Another important trial is the precise IVOS trial. Again, this is IVOS-based trial, which they measure the thickness of the atheroma volume, and after use of uh, atorvastatin, is it my 40 to 10 milligram, the atheroma reduction volume was better than using only uh, 80 milligram or only 40 milligram of atorvastatin. Uh, so, what about the guidelines? This was quickly translated into the European Society of Cardiology guidelines, as you could see here, that adding ezetimibe to uh, monotherapy of maximally tolerated statins within four to six weeks in patients indicated to receive statins is indicated if the patient didn't reach the target. So, from the start, in patients with acute coronary syndrome, we will go for combination therapy in most of patients, as you could uh, elicit, and in some patients at uh, uh, light risk or mild risk to moderate, we can start with com uh, single or monotherapy, then upgraded within four to six weeks with combination therapy. So, our take home message here uh, the question of should the high intensity cholesterol lowering therapy replace the high intensity statin therapy? So, if the answer is yes, it's not very precise. The answer is, is yes in selected patients. However, those selected patients are too many in our clinical practice. As you could see here, for patients with very high risk, including patients with established atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease uh, and other risk factors, as you could see here, for patients at high risk, including patients with diabetes mellitus or patients at risk to develop coronary artery disease, and in some selected patients at moderate risk to reduce LDL by uh, less than 100 milligram per deciliter. As you all know, we have some patients that we need them less than 100, others less than 70, as you see here, who are the high risk, and in most of patients at very high risk, less than 55 milligram per deciliter, and in some few selected patients with repeated events of acute coronary syndrome, less than 40 milligram per deciliter. This lipidemia management starts early. Sometimes you have to start aggressively to prevent MACE and to keep the goal of LDL as lower as possible. Statin ezetimibe provides tolerable, safe, effective therapy for all patients at high risk for coronary artery disease. We have evidence from ISBATH study that patients with high risk to develop coronary artery disease, atorvastatin ezetimibe combination resulted in superior LDL uh, reduction and lowering the goal for LDL. We have another trial, PACE trial in high risk patients. Again, if you use combination, it's better than to use uh, just the monotherapy. And in Zeus and precise IVUS trials, atorvastatin ezetimibe resulted in very effective lowering, oh, much better, uh, of, of LDL and reduction of atheroma volume. Intensity cholesterol lowering therapy is an option in high risk patient. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And this is our rationale in ESMA. Together we do better. Also, combination therapy and management of the dyslipidemia is one of the best options in management of the dyslipidemia. And thank you.